Good morning, everyone. Um, actually, good afternoon, isn't it? Um, it's always a real pleasure to come down to this neck of the woods. There are some amazing, really inspiring businesses down here. And I always feel very humbled to be the person that represents you. Um, I have to say, it's as you wouldn't expect me to say anything different. It's always a challenge representing our issues. Um, I'm always really excited by the innovation in the sector. Um, it really is, I think, one of the most exciting business sectors, never mind farming sectors. It is the most exciting farming sector, but it's a very exciting business sector. Um, but I do think we have a tendency to hide in the warehouse a bit and not get up there and tell people how good we are. Um, I did have a long speech prepared. I've listened to what everybody's had to say this morning. You've all been really quiet. Um, this is an opportunity for those of you who are members of the NFU or interested in what we're doing to ask me some questions and find out what's going on. So I'm going to just quickly give you a top line and then forewarned is forearmed. I'd like some questions, please. Um, we've heard a lot today about um, how difficult it is to define the skills in our sector. And I think that was a really interesting challenge that we need to take away and work out how can we define the skill around a picking job, around a thinning job, around a husbandry job, in a way that um, means that we perhaps can get what we want out of a future immigration policy. Because I'm feeling very pained about the messages that are coming out of government at the moment that are all about skilled. So perhaps we need to turn that on its head. And I thought Gillian gave us a good challenge there. Um, we've heard today about lean and no faults forward. I thought that was brilliant. Um, and also, interestingly, replacing robots with people. God, I thought this I was going to come today and hear all about how we were going to replace the people with the robots, but no. Um, since 2013, we've halved the carbonisation of electricity in the UK. That really landed with me. That is a killer statistic. God, if we could do the same again in the next four or five years, um, the challenge that's being laid down to us by government about decarbonising, especially the rural community, perhaps maybe we will be able to achieve it. Because, again, I've been very concerned about some of those ambitions. Um, there are robots, uh, and they can pick tomatoes and raspberries, but very slowly and they don't really know how to handle them. So that's what I've learnt today. Um, I've learnt that food is digitising. I've learnt that it's going to be five years at least before I can buy a robot that will be able to harvest our hand-picked apples. Um, I've also learnt, uh, and actually this is a challenge that the NFU is looking at the moment, that neither DEFRA or AHDB have got any reliable figures on horticultural statistics in terms of our productivity, and I'm fed up of horticulture being wrapped up with everything else and us being lauded as a low productivity sector. It makes me really cross. Um, but rather than getting cross about it, I'm going to try and do something about it. And as a team, we're going to look at how we can wrong some of those rights in terms of the, some of the statistics that are representing the sector because I, I'm sick of hearing that we're a low productivity sector. Um, when I see some of the productivity gains in soft fruit, in top fruit, in some of our glasshouse businesses, that is a nonsense. So we've got to start being able to articulate clearly what productivity gains we have made as a sector in the last 20 years. One of the difficulties is that economists look at this in terms of labour to output value. None of you I will be surprised by the fact that we all know that output value has remained pretty constant over the last 20 years. Our prices haven't increased. And that's where some of the problems lie in the way that these statistics are being articulated. So I think that's a, we have a job to do to unpick that and articulate things much more clearly. Um, I have learnt that we're moving too slowly this morning. I'm not surprised by that. I thought it was a really interesting observation. That food theatre is going to be really important. That lovely um, photograph that was presented about how theatrical food is becoming reminded me of a visit to Vietnam where fruit and veg was retailed off the pavement. But my God, it was so interesting. It was so diverse. It was so varied. It was a visit um, a few years ago that my husband and I made. 
Um, so we have a step change to make, but I've also learned today that tulip production in this country looks just like car manufacture by Audi in Germany. I thought that video was amazing. Um, so I think we've got so many things to be proud of. The NFU's got a lot of challenges. Um, on the long list is the industrial strategy and how we make sure we draw down some of the food and drink sector council money specifically into robo robotics and the productivity challenge. And it's something that Simon and I are involved on in a task and finish group on that. So um, that's one thing on the long list. Um, plant protection products. We're, we're that funny little thing called minor uses, this sector. I've been investing a lot of time and energy in how we can start to change the way in which both DEFRA as the, um, re as the, the, the body that defines what the regulation should look like and the regulator, CRD, um, both are engaging with our industry and understanding the detail of our issues. Um, I had the pleasure of hosting seven members of CRD onto the farm this year. It was the first time any of them had stepped foot on a farm. So there's a lot of time and energy going into that area. We've got the AHDB review ahead of us. That's really important for everybody in this room. Must engage with what we want out of the future of our levy paying body. And I'm sure Jane will talk more about that later. Um, I'll put it out there now that it is the, the view of the NFU's Horticulture and Potatoes Board that we do need um, an AHDB, but there is a long list of things that we'd like to see improved, um, change. There's some change that's required, um, but there's some great things that are being done. So it's a, it's a balance in there. Um, the NFU will be releasing um, uh, uh, some, some top line views, which you may or may not choose to use to guide your own responses. I know that John's already done that for the West Sussex Growers Association. Also on the long list are employment issues before I go on to talking about labour, the agricultural bill, the future of what productivity schemes might look like, environmental land management schemes. So it's a really, really long list. The role that I sit in representing horticulture means that I spend a lot of time talking about the here and now of labour. Um, it's nice to hear Simon stand up and be honest about it's at least five years until I can buy a robot. I have to say, looking at some of the apple-picking robots, I think it might be a bit longer, but I'd love to be proved differently by the robotics and engineering um, community. Um, the comment earlier about Brexit is just a distraction when it comes to Labour was absolutely right. We were seeing the shortfalls, we were seeing the um, reductions in productivity long before the referendum. Um, the here and now is that in 2017, the horticulture and potato sector ran short by 10%. That was of vacancies to um, recruited um, workers. Year to date in 2018, this is to the end of September, we're running 12.8% short, but really concerning. Last year, the peak month for the shortfall was September, where we had a shortfall of 29%. This year, that shortfall Interestingly, the same statistic, 29% shortfall, it came a month earlier, it came in August, in the peak of the season. So this year it means that we have had daffodils, soft fruit, apples, cauliflower, and I could go on, that have all been left unpicked in the fields. It's very difficult to get a farmer to go on TV and talk about this and put that wasted crop on the news because it has an immediate impact on his supply chain relationship. <coughs> so I completely understand why farmers and growers don't want to do that, um, but it makes it quite hard for us to bring it to life. Um, I've, got, I've just had some figures actually from the apple industry, and there's talk of over 600 tonnes of class one fruit has been wasted. Won't have even gone for juice because the commodity price for juice this year is so low it won't be worth picking. So we've got some real problems. The really good news is that unlike any other business sector in the UK, we have chinked the door open on a new immigration policy for UK horticulture in the new seasonal agricultural workers pilot. Yes, it's only two and a half thousand permits when actually we need more like eight to 10,000 but we have got the door open. So that's a real win for everybody that's been involved in that this year. And I know that many of you in this room have lobbied very hard, so I'd like to say thank you very much for all of the support that we've had. Um, as I understand it today, DEFRA is on track
to have two operators up and running by the end of this year so that they can go into non-EU countries to recruit at the start of next year for the 2019 season. So that will be great news. What we have to remember here when we're patting ourselves on the back about a new permit scheme for non-EU workers is that every other EU country has a scheme that enables them to bring workers from outside of the EU to do these seasonal jobs. Germany this year opened up 60,000 extra permits for um, people from the Ukraine. So we're at a total and ironic disadvantage to all of our EU competitors. And then there is the future of an immigration policy and what that looks like. And of course, that is going to depend on deal or no deal. Frankly, if we get a deal, then that pilot for seasonal labour, that will need to become 10,000 quite quickly. Um, because whilst freedom of movement remains, we've got shortfalls now, which mean we need a much bigger number. If we don't get a deal, this sector needs 70 to 80,000 seasonal workers a year. If we don't get a deal and freedom of movement stops, and I can't get any clarity on what will happen with freedom of movement in a no-deal scenario. Um, I understand why. It's highly political. Um, but we are going to need some very serious measures from government to make sure that this sector doesn't fall off a cliff. Mm -hmm.